stuff is that? Oh, it's all right, it's only a little screen. It's a little, it's a little icon on my screen showing me that the camera's working. Right, peep and creep, peep and creep. We're okay. So, how are you? Long time no see. Oh. Okay, slow down, Jensen. Yeah, so, now, we're in December, the weather's on the 13th, Monday, first day back at work, just had two days off, two weeks off rather, two weeks off in Mauritius, huh, huh, now, what's Mauritius like? If you are someone who's staying in a hotel on the coast, generally the northeast coast, say four star, five star hotel, all inclusive, about three grand a person, including the flights, then you are very happy because it is like a everyday you wake up, uh, you can go out watch the sunrise about. 5.30 uh, you can sit outside about 7 o'clock it starts to get too hot really to sit outside anymore so you come in you go to breakfast about 7 or 8 and then you can uh, oil up and sit outside for about till about 11 then you have a little siesta Le uh, 1 o'clock lunch and then uh, Two o'clock, half two down the pool. Lounge around under a big, uh, big brolly because you can't see in the sun really. Uh, by then it's 28, 29, 30, and uh, about half past five, you know, the sun's going down. Go back to the room, have a shower, get changed. Uh, perhaps even another little siesta. Then the uh, sun goes down about half six. Dinner's at seven. Uh, they do, they do, I mean, they've got everything basically. This is, uh, it's an island where it's close to Africa, but, but the majority of the population is Indian or of Indian descent, 51% Hindu. And then they've got a bunch of other religions, a lot of uh, Tamils that uh, sort of fled there, escaping persecution. But very, uh, you know, very uh, proud of the fact they're very multicultural and everyone rubs along the right way, apart from the jokes they make about the Chinese, where if they say, if they see, they drive down the road with loads of stray dogs. They say there can't be many Chinese people living here. This is the taxi driver who, having told me how proud he was of the fact they're so multicultural, then starts making anti-Chinese jokes. But uh, anyway, fortunately it was a bit of a film buff, so we talked about uh, the new Top Gun and uh, the old Top Gun and... Uh, James Bond and stuff like that, you know. Anyway, so, so, here I am. First day back after two weeks off. Now, my staff have been brilliant. I've only got two members of staff. We've got a full-time nurse and a part-time receptionist. And I told them both to take the two weeks off on the basis that I can switch the phone through to their mobiles and give them access to the uh, computer system over the internet they wanted to sort of deal with emergencies, by which I mean anyone who's rung before about 10 o'clock, really anyone who rings after 10 o'clock, we don't reply too much because they do, um, we expect them to email if they've got a problem, much easier to deal with. But my lovely receptionist said that she didn't mind coming in every morning, even though the nurse didn't come in, um, because um, she's studying for her nursing exam 
and uh, she didn't mind uh, answering the phone and studying and reading her book at the same time. So, you know, it's like kill two birds with one stone, really. She's got a bit of quality studying time in and uh, and got paid for it. And uh, my lovely nurse, who's got a daughter, has had some quality time at home with her daughter and got paid for it. So, all in all, the surgery's doing okay financially, so... It's a bit, uh, it is a bit strange though. Yeah, don't worry man, I'll make my own decisions. Thank you very much. I said to uh, Mrs. Angry this morning, the dentistry is to get him in a bit more like a performance, you know, it's a bit more, I feel more like um, an actor who's had a break in a West End run, but who's got to go back and do the Christmas panto here it is <laughs> no, it's like it's very much uh, a contrived uh, uh, situation getting all these patients booked in because I know uh, I'm, I'm going to face you know I'm going to face the usual torrent of people who want stuff done before Christmas people with half finished dentures that need done do before Christmas and that have got various technical problems uh, I've got uh, people with toothache, you know, <clears throat> people who uh, ring up and say like, I need a root treatment done urgently, and then and then I say no, no, I can't do it. I mean, I actually answered a call in Mauritius from a bloke who needed a root root filling done urgently, and I said to him, no, you need to. Uh, we've got a local NHS uh, emergency service called Dentaline, which opens at six o'clock every night, and. Um, all you can do is just say try Dentaline. But Dentaline won't do a root filling, they'll just give him antibiotics, you know. So. But dentistry happens at a glacial pace, changes. So, for example, there was a local surgery that shot, Churchill, in Ramsgate. There was one of two commissioned practices. It's the local uh, commissioning authority decided they, you know, decided to try and be clever and open up a dental surgery of their own where they would be in complete charge and they could completely micromanage it. And after a few years, they realized the bloody thing was so expensive, three times what it cost to, to, to pay a dentist to run a surgery, that they decided to close it. So they closed it. The objective was to close it one year and then close the other one the next year. And uh, so they closed it. And then we did a lot of advertising saying, uh, you know, have you lost your dentist? You know, we're taking on patients, thinking that a, a great reduction in local capacity like that would, 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 you know, we could increase our market share. Whereas in fact, that wasn't our market at all. Of course, it was all exempt patients who, who under no circumstances could go to a private practice. And so, I wouldn't say we wasted the advertising because it taught us something. So, but it was like a, it was a fairly expensive lesson. But now, now we wouldn't do that. But now, <clears throat> what's happened is that the, the literally it was two years following the closure of that practice before people started ringing us up and saying, "Oh, you know, can you take me on as a patient?" My old dentist has closed, and I'm like, "Oh, do you mean Churchill?" And they're like, "Yeah." And uh, um, so I'm thinking, well, that's taken them two years, you know, like one year to <laughs> one eighteen months to find out that. Uh, they wanted to go back in six months to realise that uh, it's all shut up. On my first day back, let me just try and defrost this windscreen because I can't have you looking out of a foggy windscreen. There we are be a bit of blower noise. Talking of which, why am I doing another video? Well, I'm doing another video because I'm a big fan of YouTube and YouTube is tends to be clogged up these bloody things called shorts and at the moment, not to mention ads, because I won't subscribe to the premium thing. I'd rather just turn the volume down and put my hand over the screen. So, 
that pay for another bloody service. So, this short came on saying how to align clips in DaVinci Resolve, which is the video editor I use. Uh, I'll tell you this, because we're going to be sat here for a while. Junction of death. Anyway, um, it's a big problem because aligning them by manually was always very, very difficult. And aligning them manually was never worked perfectly because unless you've got a uh, video that's got like um, a recorder that's got a clock in it, an atomic clock, and records a timestamp on the on the video, uh, you'll find that, for example, I've got two video streams. I've got one here from my um, uh, phone, and then the other one comes from the webcam. Well. The trouble is that, you know, if you record a 20 minute video, which is exactly 20 minutes long, and you put them both on the same timeline, one of them will be longer than the other. One of them will be slightly, slightly uh, uh, compressed compared to the other. And that's because, um, I think it's because, you know, you, you can, one of them's recorded at 25 frames a second, and the other one's recorded at 24.97 frames a second or something. <coughs> there are so many video standards and um, they they don't necessarily overlap. You know, I can't necessarily find one one that's common to both videos and cameras. So anyway, uh, DaVinci Resolve have finally done something which is going to make my life so much easier, which is they've introduced this facility where you just select every single clip on the timeline and then you click align align clips and then you align them by the using the audio track and what it does is it listens in the same way as like your phone listens to what's playing and tells you what songs on the radio it listens to the audio and it lines them all up and that's going to make my job so much easier because the CCTV camera breaks the uh, video every five minutes. It records it in five minute clips. And the um, there are technical reasons for that which I won't go into, but uh, it makes it more reliable. And then the, but the camera of course records in one long, one long go. So, right, I'll turn that down a bit now. Funnily enough, people saying, oh, you're going to freeze to death when you get back here. It's two degrees, it's six degrees, whatever. I'm not really bothered. It took me like, you know, it was quite refreshing to get off the plane into an environment that wasn't 28 degrees. So, so you can expect some more videos to come through now, although the videos that will come through will probably be from last April, and you won't have a clue why I've suddenly started flooding them all again. By the time I've uploaded 20, you'll be so bored with watching them, you won't even see this one, so you won't know why. But that's why. I haven't tried it yet, but if it works, it's going to make my job so much easier because I'll just be able to drag all the video onto the timeline. So let's say my four or five CCTV clips, my phone clip, and just click align by sound, and hey presto, they'll all be synchronised. So then I drag the uh, phone track on top of the CCV track and slim it down a bit, put it in the top right hand corner, put a title on it, click the end and the beginning and Bob's your uncle. But you know, but I do feel like an old actor driving to work, that's the trouble. And my biggest problem, and I know, you know, when you've been in the business 40 years, you tend to know, uh, let me let him past. <coughs> Excuse me. You, um, my, my biggest mistake on my first day back after holiday is I talk too much. I just tell people how lovely my holiday was, I ask them how they're doing, are they going on holiday, are they, you know, how are the kids, etc, etc. And we've got like 20 people waiting, all, all in severe pain, so. <laughs> so. 
So today it's going to be no talking, get on with it. So of course I'm, I'm get COVID tests up the wazoo. We had to have a COVID test two days before we left, a PCR test. They wouldn't let us check into the hotel without a lateral flow test. They insisted on us having a lateral flow test after five days. The government then insisted on us having a lateral flow test before we flew back. And uh, they've insisted on us having a PCR test within two days of arriving back. So that's five PCR tests I've had in the last uh, 18 days. So all of which come back negative, I might add. Otherwise I wouldn't be going to work, would I? I'd still be, if I didn't have the results, or if it had come back negative, then I would have um, still be isolating and uh, poor Ellie would be cancelling all my patients for the next 10 days or next week or so. But we're in the minute, we're in the middle of another panic, an epi panic. <laughs> Omicron variant uh, is thought to be extremely weak. Nobody in the world has died from it. And yet uh, the Prime Minister came on the telly yesterday and told everyone to start working from home again to try and stop it spreading. Whereas a highly infectious variant that uh, is pretty uh, rubbish and making you sick is probably the best thing you could probably get. You should be telling everyone to come into work and have a party so that we can all catch it. So I don't know, yeah, so so basically my point is really this two year rule because I think that the events of 2021 2020 let's say when the, the whole profession was shut from March till about July, August and 2021 where the NHS practices are still still only on 65% workload for 100% of their pre-COVID pay, they're only expected to do 65% of their pre-COVID targets. And they're all complaining like mad, <laughs> saying, you can't expect us to do any more than this. And uh, the reason why they're saying that is because they've successfully converted half their practice to private, basically. All these patients that can't get what they want on the NHS, they must be paying privately despite the fact that the Department of Health told dentists to pinky swear that they would not do any more private work and take advantage of the fact that the NHS has collapsed. <coughs> you wouldn't think I was COVID negative, would you? <coughs> and of course, the Department of Health knows that the reason why NHS dentists don't want to do more than 65% for 100% of their income is because they can't. <laughs> because they're full up with fucking private patients that used to be on the NHS. And the profession knows, I think, that the Department of Health knows this. And the Department of Health knows that the profession knows that the Department of Health knows this. So, so it's a bit of a standoff at the moment. What the Department of Health could do is, is just bump it straight back up to 100. But the trouble is that then they know that that would cause a lot of dentists to leave the NHS. Because if, you're, if you've replaced that 35% of your income with uh, uh, private patients, then you, you probably wouldn't mind doing 65% uh, of the NH, NHS workload for 65% of the NHS um, income. But that's not the deal that the government's going to offer them. The government's going to say, look, you've got to go back to being 100% NHS. And uh, I don't know if a single dentist in the country that's gone from being private to back to being NHS. Well, apart from me, in 1992. That's another story. So, 
So what will happen is that they'll just end up forcing a load of dentists out of the NHS. And the dentists know this, and the Department of Health know this. And so they're a bit of a Mexican standoff where they're holding guns against each other's heads. With the department saying, you've got to go back to being fully NHS. And the, uh, pra the NHS practitioner saying, just see what happens if you try it, Sonny, you know. Now, if they did try it, then then I have no doubt that some practices would go back to being 100% NHS. And um, and what will happen is that, uh, NHS dentistry will end up being concentrated in the hands of fewer and fewer uh, practitioners, and I'm almost certainly like the large corporates will be will pick it up for the most part. Um, but a, a large number of dentists, having sort of had a private conversion forced upon them, will uh, have seen the light. And that is the problem with these NHS dentists. You know, as a, a private dentist, we would say to them, look, you know, you could do better quality dentistry uh, and spend more time and use better quality labs and have more fun, have a better quality of life, work-life balance if you went private. But they're all like, oh, no, 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 you know. They're like the old dentist when we were paid fee for item. And, and you had to have, um, if you needed, had to have a dental exhibition, it had to be on a Saturday. Because uh, if you did it on a Friday, they would say, oh, no, 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 I'm, you know, on my, I'm going to miss out on earning £600 worth of piecework if I, if I take a Friday off. So, okay, so your exhibition might be free, but it's going to cost me 600 quid. Because that's how much a day off costs. <coughs> so you used to do it on Saturday. And even then, a lot of dentists wouldn't wouldn't uh, come because they used to work, the ones that were really rabid about earning money, used to work five days a week and Saturday morning. So they never, they never, they all died white and haggard because they uh, never got any vitamin D. They, they were never out of the surgery. Because the lure of the money, it was like Gollum. A golem and the ring, you know, the car, the NHS income was their precious. Uh, <laughs> so you couldn't lure these people into the private sector, but the Department of Health, in a way, has done um, so many people a favour by uh, effectively putting them on 100% of their NHS income while they do a private conversion even though they pinky swore, they wouldn't do it. But, you know. So, you know, and I don't think those dentists will go back. But, and the NHS, the, the NHS, the only leverage that they had, the NHS, was to be able to say to dentists, look, you, if you want to go private, that's fine. We don't care. Just you bloody try it. Just try it, boy, just try it. Because, because the minute that you, your, your choice is either to work wholly within the NHS or not on the NHS at all. And I've, you know, I could demonstrate this by applying for an, an NHS contract. And I wouldn't get one. Uh, <laughs> I just wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, I'm not a favoured son. And if you cease to become a favoured son on the NHS, then you have to, you're cast out into the what they see is the wilderness of the private sector having to make a living doing the same quality work and charging three times as much for it which they see as impossible uh, but um, so, they, so they don't do it but the NHS has done what's effective the biggest private conversion ever by subsidising these dentists to um, get the confidence to, to build up a list of private patients to the point where they um, they can see a way forward financially outside the NHS. So, and of course, we're copying the fallout of that. But let's um, let's see how much fallout we're going to cop. I'll give you an update tomorrow on how how many it was and how many uh, NHS route treatments we ended up doing. Okay, nice to talk to you again. I'll see you soon. Bye.